Okay, welcome back from the tea break or coffee break rather. Um, we're starting on the last chapter here for electro stool, which is transformers. Now, I, I didn't get a chance last year to lecture this chapter, but I'm hoping in electro three, I finally can um, achieve one of my my purposes and 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 teach the chapter in lecture three because historically every time i had another lecture teaching this particular chapter so i can but fortunately I, I, i'm doing it now so there'll be another chapter in lecture three uh to some people's dismay but yeah it's 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 gonna be fun i'm sure you guys will learn it but anyway for lecture two it's fairly basic um you know nothing to challenge and of course just chapter 12 chapter 12 in your textbook and with john bird which i've i've extensively leaned on um and just give me a moment to look for the is chapter chapter 23 in john bird page 399 Yeah, so that's if you want to follow John Bird as well. But with a few examples, obviously, you know that, um, yeah, got more examples in that particular chapter. Okay, um, again, this is for test two, and transformers will only be covered. This is why I put this here just now. Transformers is only in the exam, right? Transformers is only only in the examination. So not for this two. Um, yeah, not even that difficult as well. So I hope that's clear to everyone. It's only in the exam. It's not in with this next week. Yeah. Um, I think it's around 12, 15 more questions as well. Yeah, okay. I think that's that's all I'm to make announcement for transforms. It's only in your exam, it's not in your upcoming test. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, um so we talked about you know how we transmit power. Um you know, we, we, we've really come far from talking about what AC is, um, I mean, from DC to AC, um, even three phase, did some analysis. And I've, I've shown you this diagram as well a few times, actually. And if you look at um, the diagram over there, it's quite small now, but essentially, it's not a big deal. We are aware that we require different voltages for different applications and on if you look at those two circles over there we typically have this thing called transformers right the transformer is well over there which steps down the voltage from 6.6 .6 to 220. i have another transformer over here which steps from 6.6 .6 kilovolts to 440. so we are obviously we have transformers but i'll just give an introduction yeah, you guys I, know, I like to hear you guys talk about your experience with transformers um and yeah and we'll see but anyway so let's quickly reading so one of the main advantages of ac transmission and this is the reason why it's actually chosen compared to dc is the ease in which an, an alternating voltage or ac voltage can be increased or de decreased and this also applies to current as well for instance the general practice is to generate a voltage around 22 kilowatts obviously this is at a generator or at escom or rather not at escom because we don't get uh, electricity really um, and then it's either step up by means of a transformer this is always the case to higher voltages for the transmission line obviously i will show you that you know i will also have it installed for you later on at suitable points other transformers are introduced to step down the voltage to value suitable for motor lambda and meters this is exactly what I was talking about. It's exactly the same over here. We have digital gens or push out 6.6 .6 kilo, kilowatts. Or, I mean, you can also get 3.3, I think, 11 kilowatts as well. 
And eventually, not because, because not all copper needs to run on high voltage, we have a device which is uh, on the middleman between there, which easily can step down and step up the voltage. All right. So, but they're stating some, some more intro there. A medium sized transformer has a full load efficiency of 97 to 98, which is fantastic because it's nearly 100% efficient that the loss of each, each transformation is small. So, even though we, 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 we shift in the voltage and cut it around, we have a very small loss. We we'll work on some efficiency calculations. And I like this because so yeah, since there are no moving parts in the transformer, um, the amount of supervision is practically negligible. And that is true. But there are a lot of routine tests which are done on transformers, um, you know, to which I'm going to obviously bring that up. And they do say there that even though it's 2%, 2 percent of 100 megawatts is not insignificant, that is basically true. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all relative. And they say although power transformers are generally um, associated with power system application, meaning, you know, generating power, they also occur in many low power applications as electronic circuits as well. So, um, 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 yeah, obviously there are other types of transformers. I'm not going into all of them, but I am obviously touching power transformers because that's obviously what's important for us mechanical marine engineers. Um, and they do state that we should consider the power system transformer first. So yeah, so that's what a transformer is there. It's, it's, I'll just give you the formal definition to unpack it as we go along. So some good definitions of, of, of what a transformer is. Um, from the IEC uh, 600,076-1 says it's a static piece of apparatus with two or more windings which by electromagnetic induction transform a system of alternating voltage and current into another system of voltage and current usually of different values at the same frequency for the purpose of transmitting electrical power. I think that's pretty, that's, that's, that's pretty perfect in terms of definition. The IEEE definition, Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, says it's a static device consisting of a winding or two or more coupled windings with or without a magnetic or introducing mutual coupling between circuits. So it's a bit more electrical, you know, the vocabulary there, especially with induction and the coupling. And then another definition would be a mobile form of one, it's a static device. Again, you've noticed that all it is a static device. That means it's a stationary device. It's not a moving device. It's stand still. And it transforms electrical energy from one circuit to another without any direct electrical connection. Amazing. With the help of mutual induction between two windings, and it says it transforms power from one circuit to another without changing frequency. That's very really important. You'll be pushing out 100 kVA at 50 hertz, and you're probably getting out we're pushing 100 kVA at 50 hertz, we're going to get 100 kVA at 50 hertz on the other end, even though our voltage and currents will be different. And it does stay there, but it may be a different voltage level. Okay, so it can raise or lower the voltage with a corresponding decrease or increase in current. Obviously, our computations will talk to all of this was mentioned here. Well, I'll ask you what the definition is. Probably no. If a girlfriend and boyfriend ask you what a transformer is, a power transformer in particular, you can probably tell them this here. Um, to sound basically fancy, but I don't need to know this. Okay, I'm sure um, you guys touch on transformers. We actually did touch on trans transformers in electrodes. One is, is electrodes chapter five and six. We touch on electromagnetism. You, you guys just probably didn't know you touched on transformers. We did magnetic flux and things like that. Your reluctance and all this weird, crazy stuff. Um, yeah. You guys kind of did touch on it. And also, you, you look at uh, induction, we had coils around certain things, and yeah, but it wasn't really stated to you. But anyway, it says a transformer is a device which transfers electrical energy from one voltage level to another voltage level. Unlike in rotating machines, there's no energy conversion, right? So it's electrical to electrical, and it's a static device. All currents or voltage or AC, or for AC transform, obviously. And the energy transfer takes place through the magnetic field, which is very, very interesting. So what we have in front of us is a, is a very simple looking transformer. We are um, just dropping a few words to get familiar. We've got something called the primary side and then the secondary side. We've got the rectangular block in the middle, which is called the core or the iron core, or magnetic core. And we have winding. So we have copper windings around there. 
or we could call it terms on, on the thing. Likewise on the secondary. And what basically happens is we generate the voltage across the windings. And we know if there is, um, what happens when you conduct a voltage uh, through, um, you apply voltage through windings with the current induced. The current induced produces a magnetic field. And magnetic field on the primary side essentially will travel or the flux will rather travel to the secondary side. And once that flux is there, it cuts the windings of the secondary side and induces a voltage, therefore a current, and then we get something, you know, they made nothing. Was it clear to everyone how that works? Just as a nutshell before I actually explain it again. Or the principle of electromagnetic induction. If you put, if you put current through a wire, it gets a magnetic field, right? If magnetic field cuts a cuts a wire, it induces a, it induces a voltage or current. Is that clear to everyone? Are we all familiar with that? Which I kind of talked about now. So duplicy, can you comment on that? For Mr. Priet? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, you got it. Uh, it's exactly the same as a um, a state and a rotor. Primary side, maybe being the stator. Yes, I'm following. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sober. Um, in the case of, oh, they had a long, they actually wrote today, so I have to bear with him. Um, in the case of the stator, the, we could see that as a primary side, are you writing tomorrow too, Flip? Yes, 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 you are. That's correct. Plus, we have, no, we don't have lectures, we have on Friday. Okay. Yeah, so state the primary side, secondary could be the rotor side. You could imagine that as well. It's nearly the same, it's, it's nearly the same setup. Um, yeah, okay. So that's what it is, but obviously we thought I'd unpack this more. Um, and there again, it's just, it's exactly what I let to explain there. And and it says there, it's an electrical device that transfers energy. Yeah, um, yeah, it's basically the same thing. A change in current in one winding creates a time varying magnetic flux in the core. Basically, the magnetic flux within the core, which induces voltage in the other winding. So, if you want to understand the principle of electric, electromagnetic induction, it's essentially the same thing being used for different purposes here. And this is what we we have. Again, we've got a primary side, we've got a secondary side, we've got the transformer core, um, we've got coils around each one which is called turns and yeah that's essentially what it is again you can you've i've shown you this again a few a few times and we're basically stepping up and stepping down voltages so if you're looking at escom well this, this is a hypothetical situation now because we don't have that kind of thing happening anymore an alternator pushing on 22 kilovolts um, that's coupled to uh, a, a step up transformer and it's configured in star and delta, and then gets stepped up to around 400 kilowatts or, or 765 kilowatts, depending how far we're transmitting. Obviously, the further we transmit, the higher we step up. Um, and then once we start getting closer to where we need to be to a substation, we will step it down, we'll step it down also through a delta star transformer, 232 kilowatts, and then you and then you will step it down again to 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 another one, to a more mini substation. I think that's like maybe at a, at a smaller factory. Some, I don't know what factories might need 11 kilovolts. And of course, uh, from 380, you can step it further down into your 230. Oh, well, we can, you know, we keep it 380, but we can step it further down at a single phase transformer into our household. So obviously transformers are everywhere, it's looking at schematic. Okay, um, there are a few things where I'll, which I wanna, again, which is more in, introductory kind of stuff, but to give you an overview of what a transformer is, I think that is a bit important um, before I actually engage with you on on, on 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 experience on transformers. So let me just quickly give you some overviews and then yeah. So obviously with transformer, we can categorize it just like any other machinery like motors. We typically have instant instrument transformers, which I'll talk about, um, briefing, uh, step up, step down, which will be a bit more detailed, single and three phase, which is also more detailed. You also get the power and distribution transformer. Um, also, we can we can categorize it as per phase, single phase and three phase, like I just said, um, the type of core and the type of cooling system. So I know you guys touched on on the type of core and cooling systems in any case. 
Um, and then, yeah, I'll just talk to certain things and then I'll basically lead you to where I need to go. So, so the two main ones for us is, um, I got this in LinkedIn, actually, and I should have referenced that. You've got a power transformer, a distribution transformer, essentially the same thing. The power transformer would essentially be the transformer, the first one coming from the alternator. And what it says there, it's used for transmission, network of high voltage for step up and step down applications. And they typically rated about 200 MBA. Obviously, that generates a lot of electrical power. Then we got your distribution ones, which is for obviously lower distribution voltage networks. You could imagine that being the one at the substation rather. So power transformer, the one close to ESCOM, and the further we get closer to home, it'll probably be a distribution transformer. It's essentially the same thing. And they are they are rated less than 200 mega, mega, mega volt amp. I think it's a bit more of an overkill. Um, power transformers there have to stay, it's used for transmission purposes at a heavy load. So obviously high voltage greater than 35 kilovolt at 100% efficiency. It's also having a big in, a big size in computer distribution. So it's obviously bigger. Um, and it's, it says it's, it's used in generation station and a transmission substation, yeah. Distribution um, transformers normally uh, the low voltage are less than 30, 33 kilowatts, so it's referring to the sketch. Um, so you probably have like distribution size type transformers on board, because I mean it's not that far you have to transmit. And then more for industrial purposes, which could step it down to 440 to 220 volts, or yeah. And also it works on low efficiency in smaller in the smaller size. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the difference between the, it's essentially the same thing, but just typically in voltage and magnitude, which is different. Um, now these are, the, I'm looking at the instrument type transformers before we, so we typically focus on these, these transformers, but I'm making aware of these transformers. Um, so an instrument transformer is basically, uh, you get two types, you get your current and, and your voltage transformer. And what they really actually use for is for metering and protection purposes. So we can't have a, a thousand amp circuit breaker, you know, or, or, or relay of some sort. It's impossible, you know, or a, a, a massive protection device. So what we actually have is these small transformer types, not really small, but it's intermediate transformers, which is able to uh, basically uh, uh, protect the device. It steps down the voltage to a suitable current so we can actually apply the protection if I'm correct. So they say the high currents or voltages cannot be cannot be fed into relays and meters yes or, or you know or fuses or circuit breakers and so on so what we have is your current transformers which steps down on um, the current one amp or five amp or, or your voltage transformer steps down voltage 210 volts it basically steps it right down to to basically to accommodate the protection devices um there are a few pictures of them of okay this is now our current transformer particular i don't want to talk too much about this but a current transform essentially drops down the current. I'm sure you've seen this in Electra's one, if you can vaguely remember, it's this round core with this winding across it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a current transformer. And again, like I said, it's more, it's, it's a protection device essentially, not for, not for power transmission. We've got a, a, the voltage transformer. You can see it has, it has this funny look or these round bunches. I'm sure you've seen these before somewhere. And um, they say the commercially available relays and meters used for protection and metering are designed for low voltage. Okay. So basically, it basically steps down the voltage so that we can feed it into meters and relays. Um, that's basically your, your two types. So just know that there's power and distribution type transformers. And also you get you also have your instrument transformers. Okay, so you also got something called the auto transformer. Okay, and you'll start to be here when I when I, when, I, when I call upon you. Um, and they are, this is basically when your, 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 um, your, your winding is both common to both the prime and secondary side. So if we have a look at that, that um, it's like one winding essentially, instead of having two different windings. Um, and the prime is electrically connected to the secondary as well as maybe decoupled to it. This uh, auto transformer um, is typically used for, for starting of, of, of motors, especially more, um, it's a more expensive way of starting motors, especially for bigger size motors, which we'll talk about in Electros 3. Um, and obviously 
you save a lot of copper when you're using auto transform. I, I'm not an expert on auto transformers, but I'm, um, but I am, I'm, I am, I'm aware of them. Okay. So before we start and get into the principles and the science and starting the calculations, I'd like to ask you guys, what is your experience with transformers on board a ship or maybe, maybe at port or basically the maritime application? I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested to know. Maybe does a marine engineer, or does a chief or second have to know about transformers um, in terms of operation maintenance, etc., etc.? You can start to Mr. Duplessis and then just carry on down the list. Or maybe Mr. Solva has a lot to share. Okay, guys. I'm waiting on you here. Um, can you guys hear me? I've only observed cleaning. Okay, let's just quickly see. Um, I've only come see cleaning and checking tightness of terms in dry dock. Okay, um, anyone else? Can someone possibly speak? I haven't worked with him, but I know his management helps to have knowledge so he can work with him. Is it liquor or what? I don't know. Okay. Cool. Oh, with the, with the, oh, with the, with the spark with the electrician. Oh, you put him a licky. A licky. Wow. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. So just, so just obviously be aware there's different types of transformers. And in any case, do you guys cover in transformers? I mean, I don't know. Have you covered what I covered already? Or was it an overkill? Or was it less or was it more? Uh, put in electricity. Okay, cool. And can you guys hear me? That's another one. Am I sounding softer or louder than before? Am I more clearer? Can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can't hear me, please. Your volume is fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, let's hear from Mr. Kitongo, Mr. Garcia. Mr. Casimiro, anything you can share with us? Yes, sir. Um, for the transformers, we, uh, well, it depends on the vessels, but for our industry or our vessels, uh, all the maintenance are, down, uh, are done um, uh, on short. So, yeah, mm. we only do like uh, minor maintenance on the transformers, like a tightening of um, uh, uh, the checking, cleaning and checking at the bolts and so on. But we do have a step down transformers, special on the diesel electric vessels. Yeah. Mm. Okay, nice, nice. Um, and obviously, I think when I look, when I look at this, when I look at these, the other diagram over here, maybe we should forget about ESCOM because this is non existent. Um, and just zoom that up a bit. Like your propulsion, your you know, azimuth, your, and your bow thrusters. Can you see over there? Uh, obviously, it, it has to be stepped down. Um, yes. You know, yes. With electric, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's 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 the idea. And they, they seem to be star connected. Um, I wonder why. Um, and maybe not delta connected. But anyway, yes. So so hopefully you guys will be lecturing this course one day and telling students why that is. But yeah, so that's that's obviously a case you can literally see it over there um, on this particular diagram. Okay, now I'll just I'm just curious to always know, um, you know, whether I'm providing some kind of value or not. Okay, so moving on, um, it's like I said, nice light section. Um, I think you guys will enjoy it. I've put in some work with this this lecture. Okay, so the the principles of a transformer. Like I said, obviously you aware of some of the terminology. Um, this was actually a part of the syllabus in the trick, both for the DC, the DC and DC motors, DC machines and transformers actually. So anyway, 
What do we have? So we have um, two circuits. It's called the primary and the secondary. And um, a, magnetic a magnetic circuit provides a link between the primary and secondary circuit. Obviously, this is established through the iron core, all right? Um, hence, magnetic flux you see over there. What they're saying is, when an AC voltage is applied to the primary winding, um, or let's say the phase there of the transformer, an AC current will result, obviously, I phase, it's obvious. I, the I phase sets up the time varying magnetic flux in the core. Like I said, so you put you put current into winding, generates a flux. Um, um, obviously, there's a flux around the wire, goes into the core. Um, that core goes it goes to the magnetic flux, travels through the core into the secondary side. The flux cuts that the magnetic field cuts those windings, and consequently a voltage is induced in the secondary side, according to Faraday's law. If you remember what Faraday's law is, oh man. Yeah. Anyway, so how does transformer work? Says there, an AC current in the primary core creates a change in magnetic field in the iron core. This change in magnetic field induces a current in the secondary core described by Faraday's law. Came over, that's all the transformer does in its most basic form. All right. Um, that's just basically showing you a nice, I'm not sure what language that is, maybe Dutch. Um, and there we have Faraday's law over there with the amount of turns. Um, change magnetic plus over time, and just like a nice cool figure showing, um, you know, what it basically does there. Um, that's basically this is exactly the same thing over here. Um, and what's quite nice to see that they that they put you they show you the number of turns, and you can obviously see that the number of turns um, affects the, the amount of EMF. It's obviously multiplied, it's a product of the flux divided by time. And um, yeah, so that's important. What do they say? The rate of change of flux is essentially the same as that in the primary course of so the number of turns determines Vs. Okay, no, no stress there. So it's important to note with Faraday's law is that um, it's, fu it's, a, it's, a, it's a function of the amount of turns, the EMF or other is equal to flux density area, area of the, of the you know, of the, of where the, the flux is going um, divided by time. So it's, it's time dependent. It, it obviously changes with time. Cool. So just looking at the analysis of it, um, um, what we have there is what the basis, what this basis state there is an alternating voltage applied to P, uh, circulates an alternating current through P and is producing an alternating magnetic flux. Alternate magnetic flux means going back and forth, as you can see over there, back and forth, and that image over there. And that's in the steel core. The mean path of this flux is represented by the dotted line D, right? Obviously, it's just representing how the flux is looking like. Um, and then if the whole flux um, uh, by basis produced by P passes through S, um, the EMF induced in each turn is the same for P and S. Hence, if N1, N2 uh, are the number of turns, then basically we have the formula. So basically, what we're saying there, uh, the, it's, it's the total EMF induced in S um, is, is, is equal to N2 times the EMF per turn, right? Which gives you like the, the, the turn ratio essentially. Um, and what they're saying there, when the secondary circuit um, is on open circuit, this tonal voltage is the same induced as the, yeah. The primary circuit is then very small, so that the applied V1 is practically equal and opposite equal to reduced P. Yeah, so obviously we know EMF, we get the voltage across, but long story short, um, the, the ratio of V2 over V1 is approximately equal to N2 over N1. And obviously, we'll, we'll learn about that here. So that's our first relationship. Um, furthermore, if you um, knowing that your electrical power must be the same, um, we know that I, because obviously we're transmitting just one electrical power from the secondary side to the, from the primary to the secondary side. And we know that I times V is electrical power, but obviously we have a power factor attached now because on AC. And I times V equals I times V on the other side. Um, obviously we can change around the equ equations, assuming that the, 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 the power factor is one at full load, right? Transformers are quite efficient. And we couple 30, uh, equation 32.2 to equation 32.1, and we get this three type of you know, there's three variable type equation here. They approximately equal to each other, not equal, but for the maths, it works out fairly well. 
So I1 divided by I2 equals N2 divided by N1 equals V2 over V1. It's your bread and butter for transformers for this the next two or three weeks until you write. Okay, so in talking to that formula, I want you to imagine, I want to talk about what is a step down in a step up transformer. And obviously this is important because we have step up and step, step down transformers all over, right? Um, in your case, it's mostly step down transformers because your voltage originally died, but sometimes you obviously want to step it back up for whatever reason. Um, maybe we need more power. Okay, so step up and step down transformer. Um, I like this. I actually found this out recently and I was like, oh, flip it, makes sense. I mean, that's, that's all. So anyway, so saying a, a, a transformer maybe considered as a two wheel gearbox. So you think about the two wheel gearbox. Um, the primary size is analogous to the input shaft, the secondary size is analogous to the output shaft. And then basically, in comparison, think of current as equivalent to the shaft speed and voltage is equivalent to the torque. So, in, for instance, in a gearbox, we know that um, increase the torque, you get a slower speed, increase the speed, you get a slower torque. So, say, so they think, of, say think of torque as voltage and current as the speed. Um, the saying the mechanical power, speed times torque is constant, negative losses, and you come to electrical power, which is voltage times current. Don't you guys find it interesting? VI equals P and T times omega equals P. It's the same thing. You, you, you guys get the analogy. Uh, Mr. Mr. Sima, Mr. Bria, this wonderful. It's the same thing. Transformers like a two wheel gearbox. Isn't that interesting? Amount of turns and amount of cogs, whatever. Okay. Guess you know. I guess I'm excited alone. All right. So the gear ratio is equivalent to the the trans or to the transformer. Essentially, the gear ratio would be similar to your, your amount of turns, right? So the same thing for step up transformer. It, it acts analogous to a reduction gear. So in which the mechanical power is transferred from a small to a large gear. So it basically trades the, the current for higher voltage or smaller for, for the speed for higher torque by transferring power from the primary coil to the secondary coil having more turns. So if you want to know what's a step a step up transformer, you're going to find that on your, your secondary side, you're going to have more turns. And it's the same as having like a small, small pinion turning a bigger wheel. Um, so obviously the pinion turns faster than the, the, the bigger wheel on the other side, get your higher torque. For the step down transformer, obviously it's the converse of this. And we have a bigger, more amount of turns or bigger wheel, and we're trading the voltage for, for, for current. And so that means that we have a smaller pinion on the other side turning faster. So they're saying obviously on the secondary side in the step down transformer, we will have, um, um, you know, fewer turns on the secondary side and more turns on the other side. I hope you guys got that. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Okay. Um, so, so I hope you guys um case learned i know it's late in the day here, but just think it over think it over as a, a, a gay you know what i mean um and i will be asking you to be able to identify if something's a step up or step down transformer so please take note of that that's super important okay again uh just just, just some illust uh, illustration um we're getting there um if we, were, if we were to have a transformer with um, the same amount of turns and the same amount of volts applied, um, you literally have no change in anything. Um, it would be the same voltage going across. So 120 turns in the primary, 120 turns in the secondary with 480 volts supplied. Nothing happened. With step down transformer, obviously, like I said, thinking of with a bigger wheel, um, you have to put more turns on that side um and then and less turns on the secondary side and obviously you can have a smaller voltage less torque and more current and for step up transformer so you're pushing up the voltage 
you've got to put more turns on the other side. So you can obviously see the turn ratios are quite big there. So like some 600 to 120 turns and more turns you obviously put on the other side, you get a bigger voltage. Um, and obviously that obviously forms the basis of all the other transformers. Um, you know, our flow is tipping it up. Obviously for power transform, you're gonna have a lot of turns on the, on the, on the um, what's this, on the secondary side. Okay. And then lastly, just single type and uh, your, your single your single phase and three phase um, before we get into the calculations. Um, I did mention there's two different types. We have the, the core type and the shell type. We have your 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 these the core and you have the windings wrapped around or the shell one. We have the winding wrapped in the middle and the metric flux is produced. So you've got a you've got a shell one at the bottom there as well. And obviously, we, we have different configurations of how we can put put up a, a three-phase type transformer, your, your star, star, delta, delta, or delta star, which is quite common. And for the step-down transformers, we have delta, star. So, oh, sorry, star, delta. That's at the end of transmission. So those are the, tip, the, the, the two typical ones. Um, the, y, the star, star, and delta, delta is not too... Um, it, it is there, but it's not as obviously for power transmission, looking at delta star and star delta. And if you look back at, um, I guess I remove ESCOM now, um, you, you'd actually see star, if, you, if you're working from the bottom up, you see star delta, star delta, instead of delta star. And um, star to star, um, star to star will tell us um, small current and high voltage. Maybe that's why I have star to star in that. Anyway, so that's that. Um, again, I'm not sure if you've seen these transformers in your in your area, normally on poles. That is a typical. Um, this is just the African. Um, so African setup looks like this. Got it from a research paper, but um, nevertheless, um, we have uh, on on your poles on your poles bound. You typically have a single phase transformers looking like that, stepping down. Um, uh, let's say at 11 kV into a 380, 220 type kV. Okay, cool. Okay, so we obviously talk EMF and all of this. Um, there is an equation for EMF which you need to know. Um, and long story short, it's basically, I did mention to you the magnetic flux is changing over time within the core, remember it's alternating. Um, and essentially, um, we just taking what is this? What are they saying here? Um, for half cycle or half of all over two F and uh, and the average rate of change of flux is two times two times amount of flux, which is basically positive and negative side. And we long story short um, times by the form factor, which is one point one. If you remember for sinusoidal curve, different curves have different um, you know form factors. And essentially end up with the EMF formula of 4.44 N1 F and times your 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 flux there, your um your flux this is your flux density the magnetic flux. Um, obviously for E1 you need to have N1 attached to it. Um, that's your EMF induced, right? And likewise, for the second side, you have the second second. So that's an alternative way of getting it. You'll see it in the, in the questions. So before we start the calculations in an example, um, there are some, some important points um, the book, the textbook uh, mentions. And the first one is let one indicate primary and secondary in number two equal secondary. They say all values of phase values. So that's very important. So the values are given in transformers in transformer questions are deemed phase values in this case. Um, second point is um, um, the phase values are that's applied as like that. So 11 kV and 220 volts. So that's uh, uh, specified like that. So it's primary and secondary. The term star and delta transformer implies that the three phase transformer with a primary meaning. First term connecting star and the second in delta. So that's what star and delta means. And um, they always say that when you calculate the amount of turns, you always have to round up to the, the nearest whole number. 
So if we get the answer of 11.28, um, the amount of turn should be 11 or rather 12, I think, rather 12, yeah. And then what's very, very important, and I should read it to you, they said, if the number of windings on the prime second side has to be calculated, first calculate the lower number of turns, and then round up the value, then calculate the other set of values. So typically you want to calculate the lower amount of turns first and then rounding up. It's just a, just a formality to make this equation work, because they're not actually equal. When they teach you this in matric, these values are actually all equal to each other, just as a, just as a note. Um, this, but now we actually know it's approximately good enough. So just remember that you need to first calculate the lower amount, amount of turns and then round the value up. Okay, is there any questions before we start the example? Any insight you want to know? Um, so obviously, we're going to be solving a few examples now. Yeah, I'll probably solve like two of them or whatever. How much time we have for our left? Okay. Yeah. I'll walk through the examples in the textbook. Okay. Any questions? I guess Mr. Sol was the only one who's awake still. No questions, guys. Nope. Okay. So, is this one pool? No questions. Mr. So let's solve some examples. Super easy, guys. It's, I know it's, it's late in the day, but okay. Once it's done, it's done. Just try to, to keep up. Okay, so I'll just share my blackboard. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. So there's not much talk after this. There's probably two sections of talk. I and mean, then, yeah, I'm, I'm basically, basically down transformers. So I thought maybe we'd solve more examples, but I guess I'll have to. Yeah, you're gonna have to work through it. Okay. Only for the final, it's only for the final. So you probably will, you'll probably go through this uh later on okay um so let's look at the first example so it says a single phase transformer so just making you can get a three phase transformer and if you do give you three phase it'll be either delta or, delta or star just making you aware of that and they say that a single phase transformer has 600 turns in the primary and 200 on the secondary so when I look at that, I automatically know that this is a step down transformer. Um, and so I'm expecting my voltage to decrease. And it says that my current to be high on the other side. So the voltage and the current of prime is 380 and 40 amps respectively. That's on the prime side. The load has caused a lagging power factor of 0 0.8. Calculate the secondary voltage, the secondary current, and um, the rating of the transformer, which means in volt amps and transformer power, which is essentially your real power. Okay, it's fairly easy. So luckily for us here, they gave us the amount of turns. So turns will, will, will always be your your, your go-to, if that makes sense. So if they don't give you your turns, make sure you calculate your turns first. But in this case, they give you the turns, so it's easy to work with. So what they do is, so let me just copy the equation here for you. So that just in case everyone just gets now it gets used to it. Um, I'll just copy, let me just snip it for you. Um, there you go. Okay, paste. Oh. Yeah, so that's your equation you want to use. Um, the textbook does talk about having the, the, the value that you want, blah, blah, blah. But if you're good at math, you should be good at math now. So it shouldn't be a problem. Secondary voltage. I know it's V2. Okay, so it's V2 divided by V1 equals N2 over N1. This is definitely given on your formula sheet, but just show that. So now on the secondary voltage, that's easy. So V2 will be equal to V1 times N2 over N1. It's going to get fun in three. I'm hoping to make it nice and fun. So it's 380. Um, and then N2 is 600 divided by 250. So, can I get a V2? And, I, and what am I expecting? It was less turns on that side, um, big gear wheel, 
and small gear wheel, small tool, high count. Okay. So, so, so what is my answer? Straightforward, guys. Not so difficult. Oh, don't make a mistake. It's 250 divided by 600. Thank you very much. Yep, that is correct. That's 250 divided by 600. And if you get the answer of 158.33 volts. So this is obviously a step down transformer. So what we're expecting, so the, so the one, the current now, so we just we basically do the same. We can say I1 over I2 equals N2 over N1. It's so really up to you. Um, and then we know that um, I1 will be equal to um, N2 divided by N. No, it's going to be N. This is going to be N2 divided by N1. If we do flip in time, this will be N1 on top here. Yeah. This will be equal to I. I2, yeah, I2 over there. Okay, so let's let's get my second current over here. Straightforward again. Hopefully, I didn't make a mistake there. I1 was 50 amps in 600 turns divided out by, what was it again? 250. And your answer? Straightforward, 120. So it's 50, yeah, 120 amps. Yeah, cool. Cool. Now we know this is a step. This is a step down transformer. Easy, right? And the rating. So um, the rating of the transformer, they, they apparently say it's on the secondary side, but it should all be the same. So you say V times I. Um, so this is typically a secondary, apparently. But like I said to you, um, the answers, so S1 must be also be, well, this must also be equal to S2, it's up somehow. But anyway, let's just quickly see, so it's 158.33 times 120, assuming it's 100%, obviously, it's not actually 100%. So it's 158.33 times 120. So the rating is KVA, so that's like 19,000. It's 18.9996. So 18.39 okay, that's the right thing. And, and if I use um, S1, it's going to be, so value is given there, right? Um, but like they said, the right thing is always on the secondary side. That's what, but that's what we're actually getting. So if we do 38 times 50, you should get a what? Yeah, if we say 380, times 50, you'll get 19 KVA. Can you just confirm that? So you can see the, it's a small loss, you see. So you guys can tend to that. Got the same, yeah, cool. But remember we're transferring electrical power and this is this is what we call electric, electrical power is volt amp. Yeah, obviously you should be aware of that. And in the last part, they just want the transformer power. And um, that's D. And basically, we just work on the secondary side, which is the easiest VI cos. So remember, there is a power, a power factor attached to this. Um, and it's going to be um, 158.33 times um, 120 amps or higher times your 0 0.8. You'll also notice uh, your power factor will, fa will affect the voltage regulation. As I said, I'm hoping to do that in next semester. Um, yeah, it's my plan. And we get 15.2 kilowatts. So that's like in terms of mechanical power, but this is kind of useless for transformers because you don't actually use that power. Okay, that's the first example, guys. Um, I Obviously, I have another one for you. Um, okay, so let's, yeah, I'm gonna do the, yeah, let's do the next one. And then if you do wanna do a, yeah, I'll give you one to play around with while you're here. Okay, so move on here. So now this is a 
three phase one. Cool. So this is one you typically get. Um, obviously, you know, you're mature now, dealing with big equipment. And you want to work with three phase type problems, right? So a Delta star, step up probably, so probably to 20. That's prime in terms of uh, 350. I'm just going to copy the formula again for you. I'm doing this quickly. Um, I'll give you the one to try out anyway. So just do this together. And the second thing side has a phase voltage. So remember what phase, in, so the automatic when you see three phase, they're, they're giving us phase voltages, not line voltages here. So I think we must be cognizant of that. So when you're dealing with three phase, as I said, three phase, um, sorry about that, three phase, this will be phase, phase voltages, phase and line voltages. So just be aware of that in this case. Second new phase voltage and current is 380 and 75 amps. The load causes a power factor of 0 0.9. And what I'd like to know is calculate the primary and secondary line voltage and current. Cool. So what's important here is that we need to first work out the amount of turns. And this is what I said with the previous one. You always, if you, if you see turns, start with the turns. You have to work out the turns first. Okay. So in two or in one, it is missing turns, just go to the turns ratio. So you can see okay, I don't have the turns of the secondary or primary. You have to you have to just start over here. Um N2 over N1 equals V2 over V1. That's probably the best place to start. Um so let's work out the turns of the secondary one. Um so that's gonna be V2 over V1 times N1. So in this case that's 380. Step up, yep, over 220, and we will give an N1, and that's 350. Cool. So, what do we get? What's N2? What's my second turn? Obviously, my turn should be more. Um, it's a step up transformer. So, 605.5 to 5. 604.545 and uh, turns. So what happens now is that I did mention to you that we can't work with, we don't work with so much turns. We're not going to turn on the, on the coins. Hey, this is stopped just there. That's, that's one. So we have to kind of round up to round to the nearest whole number and make it 605 turns. So consequently, once we do this, we have to now recalculate um, um, our second line voltage given to us because this is this is obviously going to change. It's still going to be close. So now we, we just have to literally recalculate uh, V2 now. That's basically all. Uh, let's recalculate V2 and V. Yeah, let's calculate. Yeah, we have to recalculate V2 now. The answer will still be close. So yeah, so V2 over V1 is equal to N1 over N2. The only reason why we're recalculating this is because we can't have this suspicious amount of turns, right? So, so we know that V2 will be 605 divided by N1, which is, um, what is my N1 again? Uh, 350 uh, times the first voltage of 220. And you will actually get the actual voltage. Cool. Um, 350 is a 350. I'm sure it's 350. That's 605 over 350 uh, times 220. That's 380, you mean? I think my mistake. 380.286 volts. Cool. Yeah, salt values. So, yeah, so that's V2. Um, and then we need to find out the currents. We have one current, so we need I1. Um, and I1, um, where's my main formula? It's I1 over I2 equals, typically you always use the turns to calculate everything. Um, so I1 is just going to be I2 
times n2 over n1 and i2 will be um, 75 um, times 605 over the 350 again. Okay, let's see here. So I'm going to get my I1. It's Casimiro, what is my I1? Um, hello, uh, 119.4. Are you sure about that? 75 times 605. Let's see why you're sleeping there. That should be 129. 129.64. Yeah, 643. So it's 1129.6428571. If you want. Okay, so what I typically like to do now is I throw my table, um, simple table. Um, and I'll say, okay, this will be my line voltage, my line current, and this is my primary side and that is my secondary side okay so sorry i'm lying to you this is the other way around this is delta and that is star okay so our v1 was given as 220 volts and we know that line voltage is equal to phase voltage this so this is 220 Right, because it's a doubt. However, uh, our I1, our I1 is given as a phase voltage, so we have to times this by root three. So times it one two nine by root three, and we should get two two four point five five. You guys got that? That makes sense, right? That's um obviously that that's now phase to line. Um, and then what's next is I look at my star and um, my star, my voltage, so V2, that's given as a, a phase voltage. So we have to times at 380, 380 by, by 26 to get a, uh, the actual by root 3, so we get 658.68. I'm going to go with 68. Yeah, six, eight. Okay, I'm going to have to space there. And for current, I2, which is given as 75 amps, will remain the same because the line current will equal the phase current in the star connection. Cool. Is there any questions with this question? Oh. Ah. It's quite simple, actually. Are you guys tired or what? Mr. Duplessis, Mr. Swanepoel, and you told me you guys are quiet. Mr. Silver, are you, have you got this? Can I move on? Are you guys still there? Are you guys still following me? Um, let's see here. Uh, like, what is V1 and V2? Just, just V1 is primary and V2 is sec um, secondary. I think I said that. One is primary. Yes, I'm listening. 
Uh, sir, I have a quick question. Um, you see, initially when you started the calculation, when you were calculating the number of turns for yes, when we were calculating the number of turns for N two, we used three eighty, and then we got we used three fifty, right? As our voltage. Yes, before this one. Yeah, it's and then we yeah. calculated V two again for to be three eighty. Why did we not use three eighty when we were calculating the? Oh, the sorry, man, that's a mistake. Yeah, it's three eighty, man. That's not um, uh, V one. Where am I? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Am I a mistake? So you're saying three eighty is here, right? That's V two. What is this V two, right? Yeah, V two three eighty. So what are you asking now? Like, I think I lost you. Well, the, also the 350 is the number of turns, it's not the voltage. Okay, sorry, I, I saw my mistake now. Okay, okay, let's see now. Mr. So, what are you saying? I understand it's given, it's the given that is slightly confusing. Oh, so just reverting back to the question, um, uh, delta star would mean primary would be delta and star would be secondary um yeah and with 220 volts so is, is my mic working and, um yeah it's quite shocking to hear you online yeah it's working <laughs> here you go um yeah now when i wrote down my givens the 220 you said is what v1 yeah yeah 220 is v1 that's correct yes for both not for both just oh, for it's v1 just, it's just a supply that goes in and in the secondary is phase yes. four. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, that's what so, was throwing me off. Okay, yeah. So we 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 supply to 20 volts and then basically we will be at the secondary side we get to the 80 volts. So yeah. Okay, and then from that that is only phase, then we must calculate line. That is correct, yeah. So in transformer question okay. we, we we strictly work with phase and then we work on line. If once you do all the exercises, we kind of see it, man. It's, it's, yeah, I figured I just need to practice a bit and then maybe it will start to make a bit more sense. Yeah, sure. It's quite simple. Okay. Um, okay thanks. Okay, great. Let's quickly see. Um, and then, um, yeah, okay, cool. Let's let's move on with the lecture longer. So let me get back to the lecture now. Then if you guys want to take a small break. If not, we can just push through this. So I had some more questions here, and obviously this is from the textbook, but um, you guys can uh, figure this out. And just basically ones with uh, where they give you the EMF, um, but it's, it's it's also fairly simple. I mean, the 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 one for practice is it's it's in the John Bird as well. I'm gonna show you to this one. But basically, it's just a similar thing to, to example, 12.2. You can do that. But it's really not difficult. Um, but anyway. And yeah, so I, I'd rather, I wanted to show you these name these nameplate calculations. See, there's quite a few of them, actually. Um, yeah, let me actually see. That's, that is where it's supposed to take a break. But if you look at these nameplates as well for these transformers, um, you can actually work out um, the, the rating. So on, on, on a typical nameplate value, and this is a normal transformer, I want you just to look at a few things. It'll tell you what the primary side is connected to, two, so that's typically one. Um, that's typically denoted one. I think you guys can see this, yeah. And two, so, that you, so the primary side is connected in star, and that's in delta. So they, you essentially kind of know, you know, what kind of transformer this is. Um, furthermore, they give you the, the, the frequency, obviously, um, the in impedance volts, or well, that'll become, if you do electro three, it'll be known. Um, and obviously they give you the rating of the transform and the rating is at 25 kilowatts. So what I wanted you guys to do was basically verify these values over here. Um, so how did you verify the 25 kVA? So if you take your high voltage, um, your high voltage voltage, your, your primary side rod, let me put it like that, your primary side voltage, times about your primary side current, right? What answer will you get? Um, 
what answer do you actually get? And remember, this is three phase. So remember what three phase, how to find your, your, your electrical power three phase. Can you guys verify the answers? Can you guys verify that 25 kVA for me? Who can work out that? Remember three phase power? Um, so there's a specific root which you must multiply by. So can you please verify that for me? Yep, she's got it. That's right. Yep. Who else got it? Just check check the, the low voltage as well. That's correct. You can literally do this on like any nameplate and you should actually get the answer as well. I mean, yeah. So if we do the, the, the secondary side, yeah, that's basically 25 kilovolts. They, 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 they're robbing you a few volts. Did you ever manage to do that? Um, anyway, yeah. Okay, I hope you guys did that, um, but it's quite simple to do. Um, I'll leave it up to you. Um, again, like some more, more transformer uh, plates. And if they don't give it to you in that way, they typically um, amalgamate uh, the star and delta together, where you can see the star, um, the primary is, um, Mr. Silver, your, your mic's on, you, you sneeze now. Oh, sorry. Or whatever that was. Um, yeah, so you typically have, you have it like that, um, or it's exactly the same thing, basically. And you can verify your KVA by doing exactly what I basically just told you. You can actually work out the amount of turns um, using this, uh, using the stuff we basically taught. There is something which I want to bring attention to before we actually move on. And that's, if you notice, we've got this energy loss at 50% and, in, um, uh, and, and total losses at um, at, at 100%. So the, the in watts, they were there. Uh, furthermore, they're also there 380 watts and 1,100. This is on the nameplate of the actual thing. So if you look at this, 50%, we lose, it was, it was running at 50% load, we lose 210 watts. And if we're running, we're running at 100% load, is 695 watts. So I'm bringing attention to you that for reason, and I'll talk about it now. Um, yeah, anyway, so there is a question I'd like you guys to go research. I posted on the slides is why is a transformer related in KVA? It is more of a fine type question for you to go find out why is it not in kilowatt? Why are we talking KVA? Um, I posted the links for you to go actually go find it for yourself. Um, but yeah, it's just an interesting question. Um, you know, why is it in KVA, not in, in kilowatt? Not sure if they asked that for you, know, orals probably don't, but yeah, we have a look at that. There's some more examples of the core stuff, but anyway. Okay, so where I want to get to now is the losses. So I did show you the nameplate those losses. And um, what I want you, um, what I want to, to basically talk about is the losses. So just like an induction motor, if you recall, we had the copper losses and the iron losses and, and, and all of that, that mumbo jumbo. It's a similar thing in the transformer. So transformer losses, there's four core ones. It's the iron or core loss or four main ones. The copper loss, the stray losses, your dielectric losses, and your iron, iron or core losses is split into two parts, which is the eddy current and is the, is the recess loss. I stay this is, I stay this is, I stay this is loss. Is the recess, I stay this is loss. Anyway, cool. So there's two kinds of losses. Uh, so there's uh, two under the iron core losses, but uh, uh, furthermore, above above that, um, um, we group particularly the iron losses. We call them the no load losses, and we we'll talk about that. Um, and that is obviously broken into that too, which I just mentioned. Um, and they basically occur due to the core material, um, and it's basically the core losses essentially. That's what it is. I don't want to. I'm not really um, 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 uh, in, go go into the losses itself. And um, the hysteresis, for instance, is, 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 is 
is proportional to the frequency and induction. So the more induction you have, the bigger those losses. And then obviously your, your eddy current losses is also proportional to the frequency and the amplitude of induction, but, but mainly the thickness of the magnetic steel. It's just information sake here. But just treat the I losses as a no load losses. You understand why. And your load losses, this is your copper losses, and obviously copper losses, you're thinking of the winding, you're thinking of a guy stealing, stealing in South Africa. That's what copper has become here for us. And that's basically the losses which occur in the windings, you know. Um, it's, it's a lot of money. And um, basically they, they, they just call, they, 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 they just basically, um, the I squared R lo losses of the thing, which is dissipated as heat. So there's two kinds of losses. Typically the, it's the, the copper and the iron, and you can ignore the rest really. Okay, this talks to the same thing, essentially grouping the two main losses, um, the copper and the iron. So copper, think of it as load losses, and your iron losses is no load, and we'll talk about that now. So on dry dock, or when, or when this ship is stationary, or as Mr. Kassim would have said, there are some tests going to be done in the transformers as well. Um, maybe it's an inefficient transformer. It's not transforming the voltage of stepping up or stepping down well. Um, there are two tests to enable the efficiency and the voltage regulation to be calculated without, without actually loading the transformer with an accuracy far higher than is possible by direct measure of input and output powers and voltages. So this is again talking to that that total loss at 50% and total loss at 100%. Um, so they are, these are the two tests. So the one test um, is an open circuit test. And basically, a uh, long story short here, we, we, we open the, 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 the secondary side. So we, we should open the circuit, circuit there. And um, they're basically showing you where, where they put the ammeter on. Um, and what they're saying there, it's, it's open circuit. Um, again, no low test. And yeah, they, 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 they supply the rated voltage. And in, in, in essence, it will give us the iron losses of the thing. So that's what the open circuit circuit, circuit does. It essentially gives us the iron losses of the um, of the of the transformer. That's 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 just all the core losses, right? That's all what it is there. But in, in essence, let me just explain this one in this like it's a short circuit. Of so they're saying there, got the transformer there, the, um, uh, to supply the rated voltage to frequency. That's V1 um, on the nameplate. So in this case. Let's say we're using the Mega Industries one there on the, on the right. We supply 11 kVA at 50 hertz, right? Um, the ratio um, of the voltage readings, V1 and V2, gives us the ratio of the number of turns, which will give us the number of turns, yes. Ammeter A gives a no load current. That's ammeter we attach there. And its reading is to check on the magnetic quality of the, of the ferromagnetic core and joints, which is obviously the primary side. Well, it's not actually the primary side, but anyway, yeah. The primary current is on no load, is usually less than 5% of the full load current, so that the I squared loss is, is on no load in less than one four hundred of the primary I squared loss on the full side. Anyway, we, we put a watt meter reading um, on that, on the, the core side, and, um, and we can actually get the, the core loss in watts, which is essentially this value, um, one of those values over there. Um, okay, well, that's a total loss, by the way, not the core loss alone. The short circuit, we basically do something similar. Um, uh, we, we short circuit now, um, a low voltage is applied to the primary side now. And um, you've got an ammeter on the other end over there. And basically through your short circuit test, you're able to get um, your copper loss, your I squared R losses, right? And like I said to you, the total loss, what you've seen on these nameplates, um, for instance, at this this transformer on the on the right hand side, the, the 210 watts at 50% load, which we we'll talk about now, is the it's the it's the sum of the open circuit test, which is the iron loss and the copper loss into one thing. But long story short, the formula that you need to know is equation 32.20 and 32.21. Um, I think that I think that's an additional part of the formula sheet, which I didn't post yet, but it's given to you. Um, and what the formula essentially is, is the power, it's the power out of the power in. So what we do is take your, your full load S, which is your, your volt amp, times it by the power factor, divided by S load times the power factor, plus your open circuit losses, which is your iron losses, plus your short, short circuit losses, you get that. Um, and if you're going to have, if you're not running on full load, there's an index 
n multiplied at the denominator side. You can see it's n times Fulo times s times pf divided by n times Fulo times s times pf. And obviously, uh, we have then we have to add the, the, the losses, but then we, it's n squared, um, the short circle loss, which is essentially the copper loss. And then that's basically it there. They do state there, it's not uncommon for power transformers to have efficiency of 95 to 98 percent. That is quite normal. And the total loss is equal to the copper loss plus the iron loss. The input power is, is as always equal to the output power plus the losses. So those values are real. Um, and that's how they're calculated by conducting the short circuit and the open circuit test. And we'll just do like two problems on this and then yeah, you can just go practice the rest. Okay. So do example 12.3 and you guys can do that problem there, um, problem 16 and 17. Let's practice for all while I'm here. Okay. Super simple. Um, also coming, well, definitely in the exam, it's just one of those things that's coming. But like I said, it's easy. Okay, any questions to that? Are you guys still, are you guys still there? Just between the whiteboard here. Oh, I went too far there. And I, I think, I think, I think we are making the chapter with over the top, but yeah, it's, I think it's, the calculations are really easy to do. Okay, so I'll just, so you either can follow with your textbook or, I mean, you can use, but yeah, this is the equations essentially. And I'll give you one to do for the self. Okay. Yeah, so those are the equations what you're going to need. Okay, I'll just quickly share this with you. Thank you, Mr. Sola. I wonder if everyone else is still there. We had a long day. Okay, so we did not do this last year, but it seems okay. Oh, great. Yeah, no, it's literally, it's not even difficult. I mean, that's, 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 are you talking about transformers or this part of transformers? Mr. Salva, before we start. Oh, this, okay. Cool. So, more of the thing is uh, doing an open circuit test. Obviously, that's your iron losses. We've got um, 70, 50 watts. They give you a rating there. And a short circuit test is shown as 500. So, you have to know that is your copper losses. Um, the load is a lagging power of 0 0.65, find the uh, find efficient at full load and at 40% load. Straight, straightforward. So the efficiency is equal to the full load. So we're doing full load first, right? So full load, um, basically at full load, n is equal to one. So n is equal to one in full load. Just, that's kind of obvious, I think, yeah. And um, full load is 75 kVA times about power factor of 0 0.65, and um, it's again 75 kVA, that's your power, yeah, out uh, by 65. It's basically power out, you know, like your power in watts, if you think about it. Plus your iron loss of 750, plus your, your copper loss, which is short circuit loss of 500. Cool. Can you just get that? That's efficiency at 100%. That's when you're running on full load, if you can imagine that. Can you get that answer? You, you just do one more, you do one practice problem after this. Sima, what's my efficiency there? Um, 97.5, thank you, Mrs. Wonderful, is that correct? You just see the answers here. Uh, yep, plug and play, definitely coming in. And then we have it at 40%. And so when we have it at 40%, it's essentially 0 0.4, but we have to use this formula over here, 32.21, which is the same in the textbook. So it's 0 0.4 times 
times 75 times this times 0 0.65. So we're not running on full load now. Um, so 0 0.4 exactly is literally time exactly the same thing again. Um, times 0 0.65 um, plus and when you do when you do transforms in S3, it's it's actually a six. This is like typically one question on its own. Um, so given the values and you have to analyze the values. Um, open circuit is still 750. However, we've got an N squared attached to our, our copper loss, right? So it's going to be plus 0 0.4 squared now times 500. So the only thing what's, in, what's new here is this over here and that over there in the equation. But this is the standard formula. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it's rather better to know this one, but yeah. So when you're not dealing in full load, we should use this formula, okay? So what do you get for that? So long as prepare the other stuff for you. So uh, what do you get for that? All right, so you guys got 95.92. Okay, that's good enough. 95.92%. Um, so you can see it's not it's still still fairly high. Um, and okay, so I'll just I'm gonna give you one more just for practice. It's a light one. Paste. This is from John Bird just to show you how simple this thing quite easy, but it's it's normally an add-on question on top of the question. So yeah. So I'll just place it here for you and then you guys can do that. I'll give you guys around should take you more than three minutes. So one, so this one is at full load and then basically um other ones at off load, which is obviously 50%. Okay. So give it a go. You can just post your answers in the chat. Okay, let's quickly see uh, full load 
uh, 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 let me just see here quickly. Um, it's like a book next to me, huh? 95. Yes, 98.55, that's correct. And what is your offload? So remember, you have an m squared now. So that should be slightly less, I guess. Slightly less. Let's see, um, the book has 98.41. Yeah, it's 98.41. Yeah, I know it's correct, Mr. Mr. Someone who got it, there we must have solved the win wrong there. So remember 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 squared. Did you get that? Oh, swap copper and iron. Oh, I like that you went C U F E there. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, so guys, are there any questions with finding your your offload, your your efficiencies now? And we, we should all know that open circuit is iron, short circuit short circuit is copper. Mr. Brett, are you still there? You are the one I'm I'm I, I'm thinking now. You are. You've given, you've given up. Okay, great. Probably studying something else. All right, okay. So I think the the yeah, it's just a lot the, the, the last two parts and um but I do want to make you aware is that I didn't the only thing which you need to really go over which, which does come up is using your EMF formula and then you know from this you have to work out your area and stuff so there are some questions on that um, which is not particularly too difficult um uh, like where are these ones i'm looking for it looks like that or like this we have to work out the maximum flux value which is really not that difficult to do if you have the, the textbook but essentially once you have your, e or your EMF or your voltage, the amount of turn, the frequency, finding your flux value is quite easy. So I don't think we are spending too much time on. Okay, so the last part is basically um, transformer on no load and transformer on load, or I guess the, the, the basic versions of them. Um, and I'll quickly talk to them and then just do a problem Let's just do that one example and you maybe do the other one as well. And then you have the unload stuff here. Cool. Um, as you can see, a lot of stuff I'm taking from John Bird there. But I, I will post some extra notes. Okay, so basically the last two parts is just the unload and 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 and, and unload and no load. So the first one is um, transform with no load, having no winding resistance, and having no leakage reactance. So it's basically 
um, it's basically an open circuit, and we're basically analyzing the current vectors through the through the circuit. Um, and I think what I what I should actually show you is what a transformer circuit looks like. Um, and this is this figure over here. And just to de detail you some particular values. So I1 is a V1, and this this is what you really touch on in the lecture three. But I, I thought the book doesn't illustrate this, it just shows you some triangles, which doesn't really make sense. Um, so I'll, I thought maybe this will help a bit. So what we actually have is that we supply V1, we get the current I1, and then current I1 was split into IO and into I2 prime, right? So that's obviously you can imagine the current splitting. And then I2 prime, which is going through the core, and this, well, this is the core. Sorry, I was disturbed by my son. Um, so yeah, so you get the, the, the I2 prime and that close to the winding um, um, there and then it'll generate E1 um, from there that induces into E2 and obviously we get the actual I2 which is um, which is the, the secondary um, thing but in this case it's open circuit so all what you're really getting is I0 and I0 is the copper part which is I IOM I um, current I O M I O it's a magnetizing current and the and the um the copper current uh, oh, yeah so it's I M and I C um, and what it looks like in, in in vector form it's basically the result on the current to find the no low current it's the magnetizing current and the copper current and what they're saying there is that if the transformers are no load which is essentially this open circuit this open circuit test over here. Um, they're asking what is the current, total current. And what they're saying there is that, but this current is not actually the magnetizing current, which is, it's not just one component. It's a little bit greater than the actual magnetizing current. It's actually the total current supplied from the source has two components, which is the magnetizing one, um, which is for the core. And the other one is from the source current, which is consumed for the core losses, which is the copper part. And I think I kind of see it here. So IO, which we're looking for, has two components. And essentially, the, the 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 vector diagram or the phasor diagram is basically just um, the magnetizing part at the bottom, and then the other one. There. And then to find a no load current is I O. We typically want the no load current so we can actually find you know the the, the losses. But um, this is like the, the analytical way of doing what we do. And all it basically is is um, that would give you uh, um, yeah they say the the power factor that might ask for the total core losses is equal to V one I O, which is the total um, no I O, and then um, cos phi. So I'll just quickly show you what this is. So just just finding the currents in this particular circuit, assuming there's no load attached on this thing. Um, I hope that's clear to everyone. Okay, so just going to do a quick example on that. Um, I'll do it on the slide as well. So it's not really a it's, it's, it's really super simple, but I just want to show you the circuit so you can understand that it's just literally no load on there. Okay. Cool. Just move this. Set that in to smaller. Um, yeah, so that's that's that example. Let me just get it here. Um, yeah. Okay, so they give you a transformer, uh, a single phase, and that's... Um, 220, 220 volts at 24 volts, single phase, throw 0 0.4 and it's a page 25 watts when the secondary is open, right? So it's on no load, calculate the iron loss, the iron loss current. So first thing is first, like I said, P equals, this is gonna be volts and I, P O will be V uh, and you have I over there, right? Which will give you this I, will be, let me just, okay, they want the iron loss. So let me just get the, 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 the full thing. So IO is um, root 
I M plus what do they have it in the textbook? The I Mag plus I the I subscript I, which is essentially the so one is the copper and one is the iron loss, basically. Um cool. So they give you so you have to work at IO first, which is what you're doing here. Um and I I is actually the copper component. So you have IO. So for that, should the probably it's 25 volts equals to 20. Um, and you can get IO. And in, that answer will be 25 divided by 220 is gonna give you IO equals 0 0.11364 amps. Okay, so we basically got this, the, the, we've got a total IO and what they want is an iron loss. So what I'm confused here is, or the iron loss is the, the magnetizing component and it's the other one's the copper. So we just have to obviously, just Pythagoras basically. So we know IO, so we know I mag, which is the iron part is, um a uh, 0 0.11364 squared minus the copper one do they give us a copper one yeah so it says um oh do they give us the oh wait 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 i think i made a mistake here so this gives us the copper loss over here yeah sorry that's that's what i, I lost because there's an i squared r part here this gives us the copper component this is a copper loss. So this is a no load loss. This is this is I O. Okay. So I mag is going to be, which is the iron part, which is 0 0.4 squared minus um, 0 0.11364 squared. And if you do that, um, you get 0. 3835 apps. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Casimiro. Um, that is correct. Um, 3512. So that's so, just so. Well, what I want to have in mind is essentially this just this figure over here, which I'm going to copy for you here. Um, it's, it's just two vectors, and you need to know what is which one is what, basically. Um, and IO was a total one. So the magnetizing current um, is now the one, the one IM basically, um, which we, no, we found that, so well, the iron loss current, so that's an iron loss current. Um, we've got, let me just put this, oh, this, the first one is the iron loss current, which is this.
How's it, guys? I, I'm, I, I was hit by load shedding. Can you guys hear me? Hello. I was hit by load shedding. Uh, load shedding just came on now. Uh, can you guys still hear me? I think I'll just have to. Yeah, okay, cool. Anyway, guys, um, I'll just, uh, let me just finish up this example. And I can just, actually, it's four o'clock now, um, you know, it's, it's actually quite late. Um, I worked out the iron loss, the no load, and then I wanted the no load power factor. And then basically just looking at the, the power factor is basically the angle between the, the two. And um and you have cos phi, which is the IO would, would obviously be the, the, the hypotenuse, and this would be 0 0.11364. Uh, let me just make sure that is correct. So just three basic vectors you have to look at and just analyze. Um Okay, so cos 0 0.11364 over 0 0.4, and you get an angle of 73.4949. Um, and if you say cos of that angle, you get 0 0.284. So 0 0.2841. Is it lagging? Apparently so. It's, it seems like it's lagging. I wouldn't have known that. Okay. So just three vectors you need to kind of know, you know, what is what basically. Um, this wording would just confuse me. Okay. So then, like I said, I want to do, give you guys one more. Um, And let's just quickly duplicate this. So try problem, problem six over here. And over there, they give the no load current of 0 0.5. So obviously that is, so like I said, you've got two vectors. You can literally even use complex numbers if you really don't want to be fancy. You've got your, your magnetizing current, which is, at the bottom here, I mag. You've got over here your copper current, which is IC, and then you find the resultant, you find the no load current. That's all what this literally is about. So here they give the no load current of 0 0.5. They give you the core loss. So obviously, from the core loss, you can find um, the copper loss, and then they ask to determine the values of the magnetizing and core loss components of the no load current. So the component is obviously I mag and I, and obviously that's a sign and cause thing that they have to do. So just try problem six and let me see. Let's just do that one. But it's it's just a it's just you just gotta find angles there really. Okay, so can I give you guys two minutes to quickly solve this? We're nearly done. That's like 10 minutes in me. So, yeah, I, I think I'm calling it the copper loss, but yeah, so I, I think there's no thing, it's, it's the core plus the, I think what I should have actually stated here, um, just just forgive me, I'm just realizing now. So it has, one's a magnetizing current, um, and the other one is the core loss, it's not copper, I keep on saying copper basically, so it's it's too different it's not copper at all so because there's no current in the windings itself so it's the core and the magnetizing current yeah so this will give me for for, for saying keep on saying copper there is no copper loss in this case 
Okay, so let's let's see. We can get this quickly. Straightforward. Okay, so let's just quickly see. Um, 2400 is the line. Yeah, so basically, yeah, you have to use that to find your, your call loss, uh, essentially. That is correct. Um, that's a line. That, that's, a, that's the one you're always going to want to use for that, yeah. So I, I could just show it to you here. Yeah. It's always going to be PO equals VI over IO or how do they have it in the book there? Yeah. And so it's going to be 2,400. Sorry. So it's 400 watts divided by 2,400. And you're going to get your, your IO, which is your, your core loss, right? Um, your core current. Yeah. Yeah. Which is six amps. Um, uh, am, I, am I missing something here? One, it's 400 divided by that, so it's, it's six amps. No man, six amps. One divided by zero point one six six power divided by voltage. Not you getting the other way around. Um, Um, I think that's the one value. Um, and then obviously to find the other value, the IM value, which is going to be 0. Um, 0. 0.5 squared minus 0. 0.1667 squared. That's the magnetized value, which is that value. Because we have, I, we have the no load current, which is that. You just flip your thing around, um, Mr. Solo. So 0 0.4714 amps. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then you've got the two components. So it's this and that. And if you do want to work out the power factor again, the power factor is going to just be um, you're going to take this guy, the IO part again, or what's it? I, what's they call it? I see the call or the call loss. That's why I'm calling it copper. It's just going to be cause um, cause phi equals I C, which is 0 0.1667 divided by 0 0.5. You could obviously use sine as well. So cause 0 0.1667 divided by 0 0.5, and we get an answer of 7. Point Five four, um, and that's basically your answers. And you've got your your core loss and your magnetizing components, and you're basically done. You do you pick up your error? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, the next one is basically the same: the iron loss current, the power factor, no load, magnetizing current. You can have a look and try those. Um, it's not difficult. And then the last part of the lecture is transformer on load. Uh, it looks like a mess, but it's really not. Um, 
it's, it's really basic actually but so in the previous setup what i had was i, I mentioned to you that we had no load here so now we do have a load but what happens now is that we have to add the no load current. So if you look at this diagram over here, so instead of just having I zero, um, because now there is a load, I one and I two, sorry, I one plus I O, obviously the vectors of them. So I O is over there. That's the, the core current, you know, the core in the magnetizing part, plus, um, plus I two prime, which is that over there will equal I one. So so all what we're doing basically is adding is using the, the resultant the resultant current is going to be um to find i2 or rather i1 it's going to be equal to um the complex of i0 and i2 and that's basically all um so and this is a transformer on load but has no winding resistance and all we have to literally do is just apply that over there so I O at a particular angle, obviously, because it's, it's a vector plus I two prime and it'll equal I one. That's it's basically the result on the two currents. And, it's, and we can use this, it's approximately equal, um, equal to this over here. It's basically the I one over I two kind of thing. But in electrodes uh, three, the triangles get more complicated because now we're including the resistive winding with no leakage. And then finally, at the end of it, we including the resistance as well as the leakage reactant and all the triangles look like that. So what we have over here on the far right is our a full transformer, basically where all the currents are running um, looks like. And I'm hoping we're gonna get that to it too. It's not difficult, it's just a lot of vectors and we're essentially adding vectors. But for electrodes two, I'm just taking that to, um, Two components and adding so yeah and then i just have one example for you and you can just basically um i'll just basically do this one and then we basically done for the day and you can try the next one um i'll post all the additional notes and we've got another one over here you can actually practice um yeah so i'll post an extra note on on these things it's it's a it seems like a lot of stuff but i'm you definitely can manage um if I can do it in, so so can you. I'm just gonna copy um, this and then just looking at the vectors. Okay. So again, what I'm saying, you know that I1 must be equal to I2 prime plus I0. Can you guys see that? Does it make sense? It's basically the resultant. The resultant current of that. Can we all just make sure can do all agree with this before i move on so now we have some kind of load but we're neglecting um resistance in the wine so i1 which is obviously ac current which is a vector which is a phaser it's equal to i0 and i2 prime who's still here okay okay link still here this one more can you the cost here can you see that it's a kitongo yeah does it make sense? So we're just adding the, the, the phases. It's like we deal with a CD circuit. I just the one, yeah, that's basically all. And each one has a current attached to it. It's the same when you're doing a CD circuit or, you know, a parallel circuit, just that we have some kind of angle attached to it. And reading the question, what does the question state? Uh, a 200, a 750 div uh, by two, 225 turn transforms apply to 255 load with a lagging power of 0 0.85. The transformer has a no load current of two amps at a lagging power of 0 0.5, find the full load, primary current and power factor. So all what it is, if you're just looking at it, it's gonna be, we'll be looking for I1, which is the primary. Once again, it's the current going in here. They, they're giving us this current and they're giving us that current in that branches, in that respective branches. Okay, so then, my load current, my no load current is I O plus I two prime. But my no load current in a phasor form or like polar form is two amps at a power factor of 0 0.15. Obviously, 
define that, we say cause second function. Mr. Solval, we got that, it's 81.373 degrees. You guys got that? That's I know. So now we need to just find what is I2 prime, right? That's what we need to do. And if you recall what I showed you here, all we have to do I2 prime is basically use this equation over here. So I2 prime is equal to, um, is it, can we say V2 over V1 times I2. Yeah, it's like I1, we're finding, yeah, just, just bear with uh, the notation here. So it's 750, oh, we, we're using the terms wrong, not the, not the wrong features. It's N2 over N1 times, um, what's this? N2 divided by N1 divided by, uh, sorry, times by, or oh, I2, which is given the, the, the 245, so it's I2. So we're finding I2 prime now. So that's 750 divided by 225 times 245. And what do we get for that? What do we get for what do we get for that one? Um to see what do I see the small number eight. Is it really that big? Um uh two four five Oh, I, I think I have my windings wrong. It's 225 divided by 750. It's N2 divided by. So now looking at the, uh, the actual answers. Okay. So it's, the windings are all flipped around. Okay. Let me just get that right. Yeah. So it's 225, sorry, divided by 750. Um, let's just quickly see. 7 point, 73.5, yeah. Okay, um, 73.5. And again, this is um, at, a, at that power factor, we just convert it into an angle. So 0 0.85, um, cos 0 0.85. And that's obviously lagging there. Um, so it's uh, angle of 31.7, um, Eight, eight. And I should have put a negative here and a negative here because they're both lagging. And all we do now is take out Ocasio. Um, let me share Casio because it's, it's resultants. It's resultants we're adding here. Um, hope you guys can see that. It's coming up now. Mode complex. And we just add our columns together. So, um, so it's for the no load. It was uh, two amps shift at an angle of fifty one point three seven three plus um, seventy three point five shift at an angle of um, oh they're both minus as well. We mustn't be they're both lagging and. 73.75 and it was 81.373. Three is my number. Equal shift three at boom. You should get 75.581. Uh, I think I messed up something. That's what I want in the book. Um, I wonder what, what, what I'm gonna, let me just look again. So it's, what are my things again? It's two at an angle of minus 81.373 plus, yes. I got 74.8 and the angle negative three, 2.954. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. Yeah, I don't know. We have. I don't, I don't know what you did. I couldn't see the problem. 
Oh, oké. Okay. Ja, nou werkt het echt spot on. Oké. Ja. Het is gewoon een beetje 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 een 31 man, what am I typing here? Yeah, it's, 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 I'm getting tired now. You're punching the wrong, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So it's 2 minus 18. Oh. Minus um, 81.373 plus 73.5 at an angle of minus 31.788. That should be correct right now. Shift three, go. Yeah, there we go. So that is your primary current going through there. Yeah. That's just using vectors. So no load, it's straight trig trigonometry. Obviously, you can use your phases and stuff, but um, yeah, it's very simple. We basically at the end now. So let me just share the last part. So just I want you to try um, this one. Just to show you how easy it is. Um, example here. Yeah, I hope you guys can see it. So again, they're asking what's the primary current and power factor. So they give you the low load of the power factor. They give you the secondary with the power factor. Um, yeah, so they give you the turns again. Same thing. John Bird is exactly the same kind of thing again. That's if you want to do, maybe you can do this one rather. Try this one, and then basically at the end of end of the lecture. So let's see what you get. Okay, you'll post in the chat. So yeah, let's see if we get it. Same procedure. The, the, the problem doesn't get as crazy than that. Yeah, so. Okay, Mr. Sol, Mr. Swanepoel, uh, Mr. Garcia, Mr. Kitogo, the last individual standing. Okay, yeah, so let's let's see what you get. I'm just waiting on you guys. Can we can end it off?
Uh, okay, let's see. That's correct. Uh, Mr. Solbert, did you get it? Uh, let's see. Um, 58.3 at an angle of uh, 38.5. That's a power factor of 0.78 lagging. If you've done it, well done. Same. Uh, post, where is that solution? I'll show you. Well, just like you guys can actually have a loop. Uh, yeah. Well done. That's basically all. Um, yeah, I'll just I'll snip that part out of that textbook, which the textbook which I'm gonna post as well. There, you guys can have a look. Um, that's the answer. And we're basically done. Yeah, it should be negative slaggy. There we go. Yeah. And did you, do, did you do this last semester? This is like so, this is super important. Because when you do transformers, like it gets what, it's basically all those vectors we're adding and all that. I wonder if we did that last semester. I don't think so. Okay. But I'm not sure if we can rely on your memory. No. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll, 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 I'll post that chapter of that book um, there. Obviously, John Bird has, a, has more problems like that. It's really small problems, but make sure you're able to do it. And in summary, um, again, for this part is there's no load. We have two components. Uh, just think about the circuit. Um, you, just have, yeah, you just have I-O, basically. And we have on load. Uh, we're neglecting a few things. And we only have this, the, the primary side currents basically happening. We don't actually, once we get more involved, the triangles get a bit more, you know, um, they get more accurate in terms of how to find the currents and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, guys, um, well done. You, you've made it to the end of electrodes. Um, thank you for, for, this is new to me, very new to me. Okay, great. But it's, it's easy. Yeah. Well done. Uh, thank you for, 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 you know, staying strong, getting through this. Um, yeah, and also to let me know if there's any problems you have, problems you have, I'll probably solve it on the YouTube video. I think I've explained the concepts fairly adequately, even though this is a bit rushed. Um, and yeah, well done. Uh, I'll see you next week, Monday and Wednesday. And just keep in touch with me, especially the preparation, so that, you know, you're able to score maximum marks for these tests. I think this 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 year will be the last time I'll be offering the diploma stuff. Next year I'll be on the on the DC side lecturing the juniors. So there's a lot. I think this is actually the last time I'm, I'm lecturing lecturers too um, for the diploma. So yeah, it's quite sad here. But anyway, guys, all the best. Uh, please chat in on WhatsApp. Let me know what you're struggling with. You know, it's a last stretch. Make sure you push. Make sure you put the three to four hours every day. And I will see some of you guys on Monday. I'm oh, sorry, on Friday for moms. Um, and then obviously in person. But make sure you keep on practicing. Anyway, guys, if no, no, no other questions, we can we can officially adjourn today's lecture. And electro technology too. Well done. Any questions, guys? I'm good. Mr. Swanepoel, Mr. Silva, Mr. Kitongo, Mr. Garcia, who's still here. The last soldiers, last seafarers standing. Okay, guys, cheers, man. Have a good day. All the praise, my praise, of, my praise. Nah, I'll, I'll, I'll wish you success for your, for your, for your, for your test tomorrow, if you're writing. And see you on Friday again. Cheers. Cheers, guys. All the best.